Hi, my name is Cheryl Ann Brew and I am the lead pencil for To Be Led. I wanted to make another video about another teaching moment that I've had and just so you know I'm sitting outside on my back porch it's such a beautiful day so if you hear the the airplanes going over or birds singing or dogs barking that's what you're hearing and I hope it's not a distraction for you it's just makes me feel more comfortable talking to you when I'm in a casual setting let's put it that way so I've had this student that I've been working with for about two years now wonderful kid uh, hard-working and uh, dedicated over the over the last uh, couple of years I've just noticed that and this is something that we we all run into we get to working on a project that we think we're really gonna like and then it just takes us uh, forever with all the changes and the adjustments and the things that we have to learn that by the time we get close to the end we just don't feel like finishing it we just feel like we can't go another step it really takes a lot sometimes when you've been working on a project for so long and you're just darn sick of it uh, to you know pick yourself up by the bootstraps and and force yourself to move forward and yet you know uh, this is what we all have to do whether it's in our private studios and doing our own uh, art practice or whether we're working in a commercial studio and we've been we're working on a movie or we're working on a TV show and we've got to see it through to the end what do you do when you just can't go another step further so my student how does this have to do with my student so my student <laughs> my student came to me and uh, is now at the stage where um, he's working on his portfolio to graduate and he said uh, Mrs. Brew will you help me put my portfolio portfolio together and I said sure the thing is is that he just didn't have any finished work he had a lot of stuff started but not anything finished and I said you know you're really gonna have to finish some of this stuff to get it to put in your portfolio and he said yeah I know and he said well he said if anybody can push me to do it you can <laughs> I have to laugh about that because I guess that is what I'm good at doing. I said, look, what we really need to figure out is what do you really want to do? And he goes, well, you know, I really love doing landscapes. And he said, but somebody told me that I can't do landscapes for my thesis in illustration. And I said, why? Why? I said, landscapes, landscapes are the most fantastic characters of all so I had to point him to Mary Blair and this is one of Mary Blair's pieces and she's a she was a famous color designer for for Disney and I said if we take this character out of here what have we got left and I said a really cool landscape with an awesome castle and I said, it's got so much personality in it. You don't even really even need the character um, to, to derive some kind of mood or some kind of feeling from this landscape. And as he, he was getting really excited about this because he's, he's been doing these little acrylic paintings, um, copying some basically traditional landscape photography that he's he's found on the internet um, but he had never tried his hand at creating a landscape that's really got a lot of personality to it so let me just find another one here uh, this is Alice in Wonderland also by Mary Blair and so I showed him this and we were talking about how he made the background a little or how she made the background a little bit transparent and that we've got a very strong focal point here and this path that sort of leads from nowhere and goes to nowhere and um, you know we talked about the the um, implied lines and uh, how we've got a nice little triangle going on here that's really keeping our eye <clears throat> on the focal point 
and all of the lines just lead right lead us right back into this this triangle and even though there are other interesting elements in the picture uh, there's a lot of mood here so then I asked him what would happen if we took the characters out of here would we still have a nice mood and uh, you know he started thinking about landscapes and as characters and creating mood with them as we were talking more about composition and more about mood in landscapes we were continuing to look at these really cool images and we started talking about color harmony and um, we talked about we started talking about keeping shapes really really simple and keeping the composition really simple and defining the foreground and other other kinds of basic design elements but the thing is is that he was getting really excited about it and doing more landscapes so I said okay I'll make a deal with you if you will finish the last project that you were working on with me you've got two more paintings that you've got to finish the last two I'll help you do this portfolio and we're gonna together we'll create some of the most awesome landscapes ever and we'll use a very very simple technique in Photoshop and what we really did was we sort of combined a little bit of photo bashing a little bit of his own um, paintings that he scanned and then brought in to his uh, Photoshop pieces for texture and um, and we'll use we, we won't we won't do a lot of brushwork we'll use the lasso tool and keep all the shapes really simple and keep the lighting simple and um, the color palette simple so the more we talked about it the more excited he got and the more excited I got too so then we were looking at this other artist from Disney Irvine Earl he similarly to Mary Blair really has a way of using fantastic colors and color schemes and very 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 simple shapes and focal points and implied lines to create these amazing compositions so this image for example really simple primary color scheme with a secondary color to sort of give the eye a rest a strong pyramidal composition strong implied lines using perspective and this way of producing a background or an infinite space that just reduces all the shapes into line and it disappears as it goes back into space I love it and he did he does too my student does too so we kept kept looking at simple compositions I mean look at these simple shapes for these trees and yet you get this real dynamic and warm composition with this one blue tree that sort of becomes the focal point in this in this group but it's it's very very moody and and the trees have a lot of personality and you can just kind of imagine you know what kind of place this is it's a very magical place a very maybe a an evil place really nice winter landscape with the cool colors and the trees that have the texture of dried leaves um, is just just fantastic and then of course it's got all the perspective the atmospheric perspective the focal point notice how this tree is and this tree frame out this kind of little focal point of this path going back and then you've got the strong shadows all going in the same direction and then we looked at one of my 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 favorite artists and this is Nathan folks um, I learned about him in a color scripting class that I took and as soon as I started looking at his artwork man I gotta tell you <laughs> I was in love and you know what the same thing happened for my student he just went bonkers over this work the thing that amazed both of us as we were looking through these these um, pictures is that uh, mr. folks paints on a really small format and there it is right there that little book holds these little paintings amazing but we were talking about keeping the color palette really simple 
and we were talking about how important it is to define the foreground because the foreground is what def kind of defines everything else. It gives you the sense of scale that you need when you're looking at the foreground. But we were also looking at how even though these are very painterly and not using the, the lasso tool um, or photo bashing, all of the shapes are really simple, really simple, and there's a lot of depth. Um, the, 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 the colors in the foreground get a little bit darker. The colors as they go toward the background get a little bit more muted. So just by talking about these artists, we were, we were able to discover together um, a lot of really cool things that he's going to be able to do in his, in his paintings. What you might be interested in is uh, Nathan Folk's movie art. Who doesn't know about this? <laughs> this is Puss in Boots. And yes, he did a lot of the, the layouts or the backgrounds for um, paintings for Puss in Boots. And look at the color. I mean, it is really complementary colors, purple and yellow, yellowy orange. They're going right into those, those tertiary colors. The characters have a lot of personality, but if you take the characters out of the background and, and, and this is what you have, it's, it's creating incredible mood and the buildings and the, and the landscape take on its own personality. It's, it's mysterious. It's, it's magical. It's fresh. Um, it could be, uh, just, you know, just, just want to jump into that water or put your head underneath the waterfall. Serene. It could also be scary. Once we had this and I sent him back to start working on his stuff, we had the deal that he was going to finish the two paintings left over from another project and he was going to bring me a landscape painting. The next couple of meetings we had as, as he was continuing to work and we were going over stuff, uh, it went really well. They were a lot more positive because he was he was working towards something that he really, really wanted to do and that he's been wanting to do for a long time. And I think that's key. And I think you're going to hear that from a lot of people, you know, that a lot of professionals in the industry, you, you've got to do what you love. That is true. And at the same time, when you're working for someone else, you may not always be working on the project that you want to work on but you can bring enough of yourself to it so that you don't get bored or you don't start thinking, oh man, I'm so sick of working on this. I just can't paint another, another step. Your painting or your drawing or your 3D modeling, um, and that's what you love doing. And if you take the project at hand and you imbue it with you, you, you take it personally, you, you invest yourself into it. You're going to love it, even though maybe it's not the ideal subject matter that you want to be working on. And I think that's what this student found out. What I want to show you next is a couple of his before pieces and a couple of his after pieces, and then you can judge for yourself. His name is Robert Mitchell. He's, I just think he's one of the most surprising students that I've had in a long time and here is an example of his work. This is Robert Mitchell and this is one of the first little landscape paintings that he showed me and um, he calls it Orange Forest and you can see that um, you know he was using a, a very painterly style and um, he's already got a pretty good sense of color. One of the things that I think is holding this painting back just a little bit is maybe these really strong verticals and horizontals. Kind of the lack of a focal point. After some trial and error and, and a lot of practice, so I don't want you to think that all of this, this uh, progress you know, comes easily. He did this. And he's calling this uh, Pandora's Castle. And I just think the color is amazing. I think that, you know, we've definitely got a clearly defined foreground and a path leading to our focal point, which is the castle here. Um, the shapes are a lot simpler. Um, the color's got a lot of mood to it. 
I'm sure that he's really happy with the results and I know that that I am. So this is just another teaching moment from me, Charlene Brew. If you want to experience some teaching moments for yourself, I really hope that you will check out my website to be led and sign up for a critique or a course. See you next time. Bye.